Magab, everybody. Dr. Fuck here, and uh, as you see the title of this video, go ahead, man, it's clickbait. Um, and it's actually something that's been making the rounds on social media now, but I remember hearing this video months and months ago where Jakey Lee talks about uh, Mick Mars, where he uh, went into the, he was partying with whoever Mick Mars was uh, the roommate with when uh, Motley was opening for for Ozzy and they went in there all drunk and shit and they used to fuck with Mick Mars and Jake said something like shut up old man to Mick Mars and Mick Mars said something to the effect of well at least I ain't no slanty eyed Jap or something like that then Mick Mars went up to hit him and Robin Crosby from Rat was there and he's like you know seven foot tall he stopped it picked him up and took him out but um you know, the, that's, that's the story, but if you look at the headline, which I copy and pasted and put it here, it says, Jakey Lee says Mick Mars is a racist. Well, you know, I mean, a little stretching it because, um, well, maybe, the, the, maybe you can interpret that line as being racist, but I saw the movie The Dirt, and there's no movie more accurate than The Dirt. The only part of The Dirt that wasn't accurate was when Nikki Six was doing heroin, uh, there was no diary around because you know you know it's true when he was doing heroin he was writing in his diary at the same time I mean I have no doubt <clears throat> but anyway I and mean, I also have uh, no doubt that Mick Mars is not a racist oh excuse me Dr. Suck but I got some footage you should see well all right suck puppet roll the clip roll it Looks like some goddamn lights. nigger painting right here. <laughs> Whoa. All right, all kidding aside, look, <clears throat> I saw this, you know, I, I, I'm in one of these Motley groups, and uh, this Motley group, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of like uh, some of you Kiss Tards out there that Kiss has never done a bad uh, album, and people are saying, Oh, Jake is just trying to grab headlines. He's so desperate, you know, to, to get some kind of news out there. So he's saying all this stuff. You know, if you listen to Jakey Lee interviews, that guy just don't give a fuck. He don't give a fuck about nothing, he, especially money. Um, he's gone on the record to say, you know, he, he wants credit for Bark at the Moon. You know, we all know that, you know, Ozzy did not write the music and the lyrics to that album. If you look at the Bark of the Moon album, it says all music and lyrics by Ozzy. Come on, man. You know? And I love Ozzy, but, you know, I'm not, you know, like a, an Ozzy tard. You know, I'm an Ozzy nutswinger, singer of the, my favorite band, Black Sabbath, but come on. It's bullshit. So Jake has gone on record saying, look, I'll sign a contract that'll say that I will not accept any money. I don't want no money for Bark of the Moon. All I want is my credit. Just my credit. Just give me credit. And um, which will go to another subject. Uh, the reason that Ozzy wrote um, it says Ozzy wrote the music and lyrics is because according to Jake uh, the album was done and then it was time to do the contracts and stuff and they gave him that thing. Look you're not getting no credit. And Jake said, well, fuck, I ain't signing that. I go, well, if you don't sign it, we'll send you back to L.A. We'll get another guitar player in to do your parts, and there's no way you can prove it. Jake was broke at the moment. He couldn't fight it. So um, he signed it. But then when it came to the ultimate sin, before that recording, he said, look, I ain't doing shit. You want to kick me out, kick me out. But if you want me to record this album, I want credit. So they did. They gave him credit for Ultimate Sin. Um, and, you know, look, here's the deal. Look, it is fucked up. I'm not in no way, in no way defending Sharon Osbourne because I think she's a cunt. I also think there's a part of her that, if it weren't for her, Ozzy would be dead now. You know, she pretty much saved Ozzy's career, introduced the world to Randy Rhodes. She's very responsible for a lot of good things. But a lot of bad things. I mean, I don't know if you guys know this, but at Randy Castillo's funeral, she kicked Phil Susan in the knee right in front of Randy Castillo's casket. 
I mean, and threw Mickey D from Motorhead down a flight of steps. I mean, that that lady's a complete and utter cunt. I, 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 no way I'm defending her. But here's the thing. Jake is to blame for signing that contract. Sure, he was in a desperate situation, so he took it. But still, any way you slice it, he fucking signed a contract, so therefore, that's why it says Ozzy Osbourne. Uh, songwriter, and the same applies to Mr. Bob Daisley. Um, Bob Daisley's always complaining and always suing them. A couple things that some of you Bob Daisley defenders don't realize is uh, he makes m money royalty off the first two uh, Bark of the Moon albums, but he wants more. I mean, the first two uh, Ozzy albums, but he wants more money. That's why he keeps suing them because I saw one of the court uh, court documents that says. You know, Bob Daisley pretty much, not pretty much, he is a millionaire. You know, over $2 million, maybe even more than that. But I know in one of the documents, he's received over $2 million since 1980. But you know, Ozzy probably received $10 million, So that's why Bob is pissed off, because Bob says he wrote all those lyrics and this and that. Not doubting he didn't, but there is a side of me that kind of like, I question Bob Daisley's uh, honesty too. Because if anybody out there has the DVD Rainbow in Munich on the Long Live Rock and Roll Tour, there is a bonus feature with uh, an interview with Bob Daisley. And uh, he was talking about when they were touring in 1977, uh, they were at an airport and Richie Blackmore, uh, there was a roadie they had that looked like E.T. So what Richie Blackmore did, put a picture of E.T. in his passport to fuck with him. In 1977, what year? I'm, I'm a little hazy on the year that E.T. came out, 82, 83. I know it was the 80s for sure. So this was way before the movie E.T. Watch that interview. Come on. That, that proves his honesty. And I know some of you Bob Daisley defenders, because I've mentioned this before on my Black Sabbath channel, which I'm going to bring all those videos over here, by the way. Um, you know, just like... Kiss defenders, Motley defenders, every defender you can get. You can give them straight facts, and they'll be like, "Well," and I forgot. I forgot the 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 excuses people made for Bob Daisley. Um, but honestly, when I found out Bob Daisley was still getting royalties for those two uh, Ozzy albums, I was kind of like, "Fuck me, really." I think Bob Daisley's a piece of shit. I will also say I think Bob Daisley is also a genius when he was with Ozzy, because uh, those lyrics he did write with Ozzy are great. And if you listen to those, that you know, I think he's very underrated. Uh, the bass work he did, especially on those two first Ozzy albums, the, you, that you listen to that bass work, man, he's really good. I think that's the best thing he did. Unfortunately, Bob Daisley cannot do anything to make him money unless he has Ozzy Osbourne singing for him. And you also got to remember that they kicked Bob Daisley out of the band before they came over to America to do the uh, Blizzard of Oz tour. They got Rudy Sarzo and Tommy Aldridge to replace Lee Kerslake and Bob Daisley. So they, they threw him to the curb. Then when it was time to do Bark of the Moon, they called him back and he came back. And then they fucked him over again. And he came back. Bob Daisley kept coming back after they kept fucking him over. He came back for Ultimate Sin. He came back for No Rest for the Wicked, uh, songwriting-wise. I think he even played on that album. I could be wrong. And I'm pretty sure, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I think he did some songwriting on No More Tears. I could be wrong about that. But all I know, that guy's been fucked over by the Osbournes constantly, and he kept coming back. And then when they stopped calling him back is when he started the lawsuits. So look it up. I saw it myself with my own eyes. Court documents show that Bob Daisley has been getting royalties for, I don't know about Bark at the Moon and Ultimate Sin and No Rest for the Wicked and maybe No More Tears. I'm not sure about that. But I do know that Bob does sue them for the first two Ozzy albums because he wants more. You know, a couple million ain't enough, you know. Um, does he deserve it? Yeah, probably. You know, I'm not going to say he doesn't, but... A lot of you Bob Daisley fan thinks he was completely fucked over. Like he's not going to make no royalties at all. Court document shows he is. And that's why he keeps losing. Because he signed contracts back then. And uh, the contracts, you know, 
are, are against him, but he still makes uh, royalty checks off it. But, uh, and I know it's a very unpopular thing for me to say this, and I know there's going to be some haters that are going to leave comments below uh, saying how full of shit I am, but look it up. It's, it's the truth. But I'm not defending Sharon Osbourne. She's a, a conniving cunt, and she knows how to fuck over people, and people get fucked over by her by contracts that, don't, that, that hold up in court. So there you go. So that's uh, my, my thing about Jakey Lee, and I threw in a little Bob Daisley. Well, mostly Bob Daisley. I also got to say, I, I love Jakey Lee. I met Jakey Lee. Jakey Lee was fucking awesome. He did an ID for our, our, um, our, our podcast, and he's just a funny guy. I had a lot of fun hanging out with him at a club, um, outside the club when I saw him. And it was a disastrous show. That's another thing. That show was the first night of the new singer they replaced in Red Darian Cartel, and they started the show with Ultimate Sin, and the guy was singing the lyrics to Now You See It, Now You Don't. It was a train wreck. But, you know, Jake don't give a fuck. Jake brought back the original singer for the next album that pretty much fucked up everything on the road on the first couple shows and got kicked out. Brought him back. Jake just don't care. Jake is pretty much, uh, as you all know, he became a reclusive for a very, very long time and didn't give a fuck about anything. And now he's doing the Red Dragon Cartel, but if it all falls to shit, Jake just doesn't care. So for him to talk about Mick Mars being a racist and all that shit, it's not because he's doing it for publicity or get his name out there. I don't think. That's my personal opinion. If you think different, I respect that because that's your... Per I personally think that Jake just lets it all out, man, because his interviews are the best. You got to listen to Jakey Lee interviews. They're fucking awesome. Anyway, that's all I got to say. And oh yeah, look what I'm wearing. Uh, I'm not a fan of Def Leppard, but I love uh, I love the early stuff. Uh, I love Ten Arm Def Leppard, especially the Pete Willis stuff. First three albums, Pete Willis had a lot to do with Dynasty. I mean Dynasty. Listen to me, um, Pyromania. And uh, I love On Through the Night. My favorite would probably be um, uh, High and Dry, which I'm gonna have reviews for those albums here on this channel. They've been banned elsewhere. I mean, here on YouTube, but I'm going to fix it up, tool it up so it can come back up on here. Because I don't think it's ever been up on YouTube, so that that won't be anytime soon. We're going to have reviews every single month, a uh, brand new review from different bands every month, and every day something new, man. And thanks everybody that stayed, and I don't give a fuck who leaves. I, I don't care. I really don't care. Uh, anyway, going to go now. Thanks for watching. Schmack a gob. This video is brought to you by Miami Metal Merchant. For your metal needs and competitive prices, visit MiamiMetalMerchant.com. Tell them Dr. Fuck sent you. Hey, I'm Dr. Fuck. And I'm the Ayatollah of Alcohola. And we are from the Rock and Metal Combat Podcast. If you want to check out some crazy, uncensored, unbiased, totally nuts reviews of classic hard rock and heavy metal albums check us out you can get us on podbean and itunes new episodes every sunday that's right and we also do each other's moms true free of charge well mine charges oh yeah yeah mine's free hey check out my podcast the Vieira vault we're on spreaker we're on itunes and we're on youtube check it out and subscribe Hey, Headbangers, you want your own radio show? Well, you got it. On Thursday nights here on that metal station, join me on the Dr. Fuck Show 
go in the chat room and I will make you my co-host. That's right. Everybody that joins me in the chat room, I discuss whatever you guys want to talk about. I'll mention your name. I'll say what you say. And we're going to go back and forth. And I'll even fucking play whatever request you want. Unless it sucks, then I ain't playing it because my show rules. And only songs that rule is allowed right here on that metal station. The Dr. Fuck Show airs live Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern. Hope to see you there. Well, no, no, fuck that hope. I better see you there, motherfucker.